Good morning, everybody. If you're uh, listening to this, it means that my wife is either uh, currently giving birth to our new kid or the new kid's already come and I'm enjoying its presence as we speak. I'll be out for hopefully about five days just to get the kid transitioned back to the house and, you know, that whole gimmick, get my new kid used to the old kid and all that stuff. Um, which is weird because I'm not really 100% used to them yet, but, you know, it's been three years. Just give me some time. Anyway, I thought, uh, what could I do for geometry? Because we haven't really gone a whole lot of geometric places yet, and I'm not really sure where we're going to be when the actual uh, birth occurs. So I thought I'd kick back into stuff we've done before that's uh, geometry-related and build on those skills for right now. The thing we're going to talk about today, of course, is the Pythagorean Theorem. Uh, most of you refer to it as A squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, what you may or may not remember about the Pythagorean theorem is that the main requirement is that you have a right triangle. This is obviously a triangle. It's got three sides. Please forgive the wavy lines. I'm not the best writer. Plus, I'm having to move around this camera, and I'm left-handed, so you figure it out. Anyway, um, a right angle in a triangle is required. Otherwise, the uh, Pythagorean theorem doesn't necessarily work. In fact, as we go through this week, you'll talk about what it actually means if it uh, doesn't work or how I find something out about a triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. But the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is touch that right angle. Anytime I'm trying to find a side, a missing side of a right triangle, I'm always going to use Pythagorean theorem. But in order to make sure I use it correctly, I'm going to touch that right angle. And it may feel horrible to do it. You may feel like a bad person. Whatever. Just touch it. It's okay. Um, just don't be, you know, inappropriate about it. Once I touch that right angle, the thing I'm going to do is look at which two lines actually make up the angle. So I've got this line. So I'm going to mark them out this line and this line are the two lines that are making up that right angle. The benefit of knowing what that is is can tell me whether uh, the x value here represents an a side or a c side. As you recall, the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. A generic version of this looks like this. The two sides that make up the uh, right angle, I'm sorry, I don't know why I put the squares in there. They're not squared yet. Um, so if I have A and B sides, those are the sides that make up the right angle. The reason that it's a square is, say, this is a side of uh, 3 and this is a side of 4. If I actually make a square, this is the worst square ever down here. It looks totally like a rectangle, but we're going to pretend anyway. Right now I have nine individual one by one unit boxes here and 16 here. Well, based on the a squared plus b squared idea, that would be a would be 3 squared plus b would be 4 squared, and I'm supposed to get something else squared. So c squared. We're going to figure out what that is. A squared, a 3 squared, if you remember, is 9. 4 squared is 16. If I add these together, I get 25 equals c squared. And in case you forgot what the opposite of squaring something is, it's square root. So I'm going to take that uh, square root of 25. It gives me 5. So c equals 5, which, based on the information that I've been given in this problem, if I have 9 individual squares here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, assuming this is 4 and this is 4. Well, look what's here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So it does work perfectly. Uh, so that would make this side length 5. That's why the Pythagorean theorem works. I don't know why I drew this gigantic one and then solved this whole problem. So we're just get rid of the other mess. I was just reminding you why the Pythagorean theorem works. Because unlike some uh, people, I don't like to keep you in the dark about why math things actually work and not just and just 
just follow the formula, people. I don't like that mentality. So we're actually going to solve this one. And we know that the x side is either an a or a b. So I'm going to plug it in down here. So I'm going to say x squared is my a. My b value is 9.1 because that's the other thing that's in blue. And my c squared is 14. So let's do 9.1 squared. 9.1 squared is 82.81. 14 squared is 196. And I've still got x squared. I'm going to move this over here somewhere so we can actually solve it. If I'm writing off the screen right now, I'll fix it. Don't worry. Oh, no, I'm not. Good. So once we get to this point, it's easy to solve. We just solve it as normal. I drew my line. There's no baby goes to bathroom scenarios here. I don't need to clean that room. But the party is over, so let's get rid of this 82.81. So I'm going to subtract 82.81. Subtract from both sides. 196 minus 82.81. You get 113.19. Let me erase this out of the way. And I'll put it on the inside. So now I'm left with x squared equals 113.19. And remember, to get rid of that x squared, I need to do square root. So I'm going to take the square root of 113, whoops, not 133, 113.19. And I get 10.6. So x equals 10.6. So in order for this to be a right triangle, this side needs to be 10.6. So that's how the Pythagorean theorem works. Let's look at maybe, you know, one more. Why not, right? So uh, let me draw one out here for you. Let me uh, do it this way. There we go. And uh, let me label the sides. This is 9. This is 4.1. And let's make this one x. Why not? So the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is figure out what I'm trying to do, which is find this missing side. And I remember that any time I have two sides and I've got the right triangle, I'm going to use a Pythagorean theorem. So I go straight to this, touching that right angle. That way I can mark out the two sides that make up that right angle. So it appears that 9 and 4.1 are both components of my problem. So that would be A and B. So if I write the formula out, that pen is dying and I'm being annoyed by it, so I'm going to trade pens out. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. My A squared can be either 9 or 4.1. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to make it 9 because that's what I felt like doing in my heart. 4.1 is my B. And you might want to go ahead and put them in parentheses. That'll save you some time of messing up and getting really confused and angry with yourself. Uh, so I can go ahead and type all this in since they're on the same side of the equal sign. And I might want to draw that line so I remember what to do later. Um, I can go ahead and type the whole thing in if I want. So 9 squared plus... 4.1 squared equals 97.81. Now, I've got C squared equals 97.81. And all I have to do is get C all by itself. In this case, to get rid of the square, I'm going to do square root. So I'm going to go back in, type in square root of 97.81, and get 9.9. .9. And maybe they want a unit in there, so I'll throw feet in there for you. So remember, the first thing you want to do is touch that right angle. Then you want to set up the equation. So actually write the equation down. Uh, basically, the entire right side of the room right now needs to be writing that equation down. So that would be uh, you know, Matthew and Tyler and Austin and everybody else. You have to write it down so you can see it. That way, later on, when we do more complicated things with it, you aren't totally ruining it for yourself by refusing to ever write anything down. Don't be lazy. And not to mention, 
uh, or I should say that the left side of the room, you're not much better, so don't think that you can get away with it. You just There's a couple of you who write it down consistently, so I didn't pick on you as much. Let's talk about one more type of problem that we can use with the uh, Pythagorean theorem. Uh, we, I spoke earlier about potentially and later in the week talking about well, what happens if the Pythagorean theorem doesn't work and what does it mean. Well, one of the things we can do is determine based on the lengths of sides whether or not it's even possible for the triangle to be a right triangle. I'm assuming that the one that looks most like the right angle is the right angle, even though my hand or my drawing is so bad, it doesn't look as much like a right angle as I need it to look. Now, uh, based on the idea of the Pythagorean theorem, we can also assume that the longest side, no matter which one it is, has to be C. A uh, triangle cannot be set up uh, properly with all the hinges and everything that it needs and have a hypotenuse, which is the long side if you forgot what it's called, that's shorter than the two sides. It just doesn't work that way. Remember, these are called the legs and this is the hypotenuse. You may or may not need to remember that, but I'll reference it so if you hear me say it, now you know. Anyway, I can look at this and determine whether or not it's a right triangle by using the Pythagorean theorem. Well, how do I do that? First thing you have to do is write down the Pythagorean theorem. Write down the Pythagorean theorem, for goodness sake, people. So the first thing, uh, so I'm going to go over here. There's no right angle to touch, which I'm sure Miss Sanders will be very disappointed with because I know she likes to. Uh, but we're going to see if I could touch it and it would make sense to do it. There are angles, so I guess you could satiate your need that way. Anyway, a squared and b squared are going to be the two smaller of the numbers. So uh, 13 squared and 14.4 squared. It doesn't matter which one you pick uh, for a or b. It just matters that they're there. Doesn't that 13 look like a b? What an ironic choice. Anyway, I'm going to set it equal to c squared. My c is 19.4. Then I'm going to go and actually type them out. So 14.4 squared plus 13 squared equals 376.36. Write that down. Write that down on your paper with a pencil or a pen. And then we do 19.4. 376.36. That's what I got here. If this side is equal to this side, so if both sides are equal, right triangle. If both sides are not equal, it's not a right triangle. So for your assignment, all you have to do is figure out whether it's a right triangle or not and pick yes or no. If you are a staff member and are currently listening to me talk, I will say for this section, anything under the heading state if each is a right triangle, I would like you to grade their papers not by circling how many they the ones that they've missed, but telling them how many they missed out of how many they did. That way they won't just change the answer from yes to no and then turn it in. They are extremely uh, manipulative in that way. But if you're smart and say there's 10 of them and they missed three of them, don't tell them which ones they missed and don't even mark or missed don't mark their paper at all just say oh you missed three of them and give it back and let them keep working uh, as far as that's concerned that'll make it much easier for them to not just cheat their way through the problem and uh, save you a heck of a lot of headache later so in this case these two things are equal so yes this is a right triangle uh, I think you guys are ready so I'm not going to do practice problems per se this time because you've done Pythagorean theorem like a billion and a half times. I guess I could show you one that's not, that doesn't work. So say I have this triangle. This one doesn't, this one's not going to work. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. My A and B are the two smaller ones, remember. So 48 squared plus 59 squared equals 80 squared and 59 squared oops plus 48 squared gives me 5785 80 squared gives me 6400 
this is not the same number on both sides, so this is mathematically a lie, so you're just going to put no. That's all you got to do. So everybody should be able to do fine on this one. Good luck.